so students let us come to the second part of the chapter land soil water natural vegetation and wildlife which is a second chapter of our geography book of class 8 already we done the land part in our first part so in this part we will do soil introduction that what is a soil if we see soil then the soil is the it is a mineral which is on the uppermost part of the earth surface that is known as soil the factors which affecting the soil formations are parent rock means the major rock or the rock from which the soil is originate is known as a parent rock for example it's a mountain area made up of a particular rock like sedimentary rocks when it is eroded by water and sediments are deposit here now this soil is made up of the rocks of this mountain which was eroded by river so this mountain is a parent rock of these soils relief relief also affect the formation of soils like here you see it's a slopey region so here very less soil is found mountain type of soil is found on other hand in this plain area a very loamy type of soil or alluvial type of soil is found so it depends on the relief feature for example the clouds are coming from this direction so in this region we see a lot of rainfall while these comes in a rain shade area so here the soil is more, much more fertile than the soil of this regions so relief also affect the formation of the soil obviously flora fauna and microorganism like you can take the example of earth these are those regions where we will see heavy temperature heavy rainfall and a high temperature because of this we will see a dense type of forest here which helps to create humus soil on other hand in polar areas we will see a very less flora and fauna and because of this the soils are less fertile also so it depends on the flora fauna also time like here it take 100 years to here only 1 inch of soil take 100 to 1000 years for its formations as we already discussed that here vegetations are found that is why it take only 100 years on other hand in polar regions it took 1000 years so time is also an important factor for the formation of the soil and obviously which type of rainfall flora fauna and microorganisms are found in a particular region that's all just because of the climate which is found in that region so these are the factors affecting soil formation Now let us come to the second part of the chapter and that is soil formation if we see the soil formation then the main main soils which are found in basically the soil is made up of parent rock which is also known as the arzo horizons here unweathered rock parent rocks are there as you can see here in this diagram later on because of the weathering process the soils break into many particles which is known as c horizons here weathering soils and also a little organic materials of or lives are also found here in the b horizon it is a zone of accumulation of the soil in a horizon plog zones and rich in the organic matter this soil is too much rich in organic matter 
and the topmost soil is known as the humus also so this is how we see the soil formation with the help of this diagram now let us come to the next part the chapter which is degradation of soil degradation of soil means when the soil is degraded by or is lost because of many reasons is lost its fertility is known as the degradation of soil first reason is when we left we we will not left it fallow fallow means when the farmer left a particular patch of land for a few time period so that during that particular period the land or the soil gets its fertility but if we continuously doing agriculture or crops cultivating crops on a soil then it may be possible that soil lost lost its fertility erosion by water and wind this is also a major fact for the degradation of soil because of the heavy rainfall we will see sheet erosion means the upper part of the soil is eroded by water on other hand because of the too much blow flow of the wind also creates the erosion of the soil let us discuss some other factors also first discuss the physical factors if the area is sloped then it helps for the degradation of the soil or the erosion of the soil intensity of the rainfall that how much rain is getting by the land surface if it is too much heavy rainfall then it may be possible that the soil is degraded let us take an example of india as we all know that in this region and in these regions the laterite type of soil is found which is a very less fertile soil the reason is that these areas get heavy rainfall of by the arabian sea and this area is get heavy rainfall because of the bay of bengal branch and the whole water drain into bay of bengal and drain into arabian seas and keep all the minerals and fertile things with themselves so this is how only the barren soil or the laterite soil is left behind it so the intensity of the rainfall is also an important part of it velocity of wind that how much wind is blowing if it is fast then it will erode a large part of the soil which is known as the sheet erosion also we discussed physical factors so let us come to the human fact human factors also responsible for the soil erosion like overgrazing because of the overgrazing now there is no vegetations who hold the soil with their roots so it is easily eroded the same thing is because of the deforestation also chemical fertilizer too much use of chemical fertilizer is also responsible for the degradation of the soil we can take the example of the state rajasthan in rajasthan we see the largest man made lake that is the indira gandhi lake because of this lake now this region of rajasthan that is the sriganagar and hanuman region of rajasthan is getting too much water through this river now the farmer starts growing a lot of crops here even they starts growing rice and because of that this but they forget that this is a arid soil and whenever they irrigate this land the water goes underground and a very thin layer of salt is left behind it on the surface 
within a 10 years the whole soil of ganganagar and hanumangarh become barren where the farmers of this areas or the soil is able to grow dry crops like millets but now it is not able to grow anything and this is just because of our irrigation so our next point is our irrigation poor agriculture practices means the old type of technology or the system is used for agriculture now let us come to the next part of the chapter that is the soil conservation as i already told you that in the last part of each topics we have to discuss how to conserve that thing so in conservation obviously all the points which comes here we have to use the opposite points of all these like afforestation means to plant more trees mountain areas in mountain areas it is little bit different method we can use like control shifting cultivation terrace farming through terrace farming we can conserve soil it is also known as step farming like this now actually what we are doing here is that we make nalas like this on the wall sides of the field and on this sides we make a bunk like this and then we grow crops on the field part wherever there is a, a rainfall the water goes to these nalas and from these nalas they goes to their direction at a particular direction is given so now they cannot erode this soil on other hand the water which or the rain fall on this particular patch or the particular piece of the field that is also not goes towards this direction because we made bund here so this is how we try to solve the problem of soil conservation through terrace farming Control plowing means plowing in the hilly areas, in the hilly slopes, as it is a parallel plowing with in the hilly areas we are doing, known as the control plowing, like in this direction. The same thing control barriers. Here we make barriers made up of rocks or mud. Means are small, small dams. Because of this, now water cannot take its speed. It cannot erode the soil. Rock dams. By making the rock dams, also we can conserve it. This is what we can do in the mountain areas. Now let us come. How we can conserve soil in plain areas if we come to the plain areas then here we can conserve soil through strip cropping means growing different crops on parallel in a narrow strips is known as strip cropping with the help of this soil cannot lost its fertility by making bindings of fields also stop the erosion of the soil it reduces the gully erosions as what we say mulching mulching means to grow grass so here we grow the grass in these particular areas so now we can grow crop now the whole this grass area the grasses not only stop the erosion of the water erosion of the soil through water and air but its roots not only bind the soil but also keep the soil keep the wetness of the soil also 
so this is how mulching helps in the conservation of soil now let us come to the coastal land arid region by making shelter belts the same thing you make a long shelter belt like this here is a desert area on other hand this part of the soil is very fertile soil when wind blows from this direction to this direction the sand does not come on this fertile soil land area because this sand because these uh, shelter belt stop the sands to come in this region similarly the same process comes here when the wind comes from this direction, this direction the fertile soils cannot go to desert area so its shelter belt basically stop the desertification process so this is how today we do soil part except one thing and that one thing is the distribution of soils in India and that we will do in our second part when we will do water resource that's all my dear students any kind of problems doubts etc you have you can send me your comments I will definitely reply to you this is my blog visit it and thank you